Good morning, Batavia Covenant Church, and welcome to our worship service here this morning. This Sunday is a little bit different in that it is our first community group Sunday. We are so excited to launch this initiative that we've been working on. And for those of you that are watching this on Zoom or in person as a part of a community group, we are so excited to get to discover the presence of God among us this morning. We're going to be doing these community groups once a month for the foreseeable future. So if you're watching this video on YouTube or at a later date and would like to be involved with a community group in the future, you can contact our church office and we would absolutely love to connect you to these groups. But for now, I invite you to stand as we worship our God together. Your presence, let us 
I have had enough, God. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. And with that, Elijah lays down under a bush in the middle of the wilderness to die. 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah has reached the absolute low point in his, in his life. He has hit rock bottom. He's ready to be done. He left his servant behind and traveled a whole day into the wilderness by himself, seemingly with no intention of leaving that spot. That would be the place where he dies, the place where he gave up on God's mission and his call and whatever else. It's, it's interesting, actually, because this comes right after a huge high point in Elijah's life. He had challenged the prophets of Baal to a duel. We're going to see whose God is, is real on top of the mountain. Let's have a showdown. We'll set up two altars and see whose God can send down fire to consume the whole thing. And the prophets of Baal called out all day long and they even slashed themselves and wailed to their God. And Elijah mocked them as they did. But the, the, the gods of Baal never came. And Elijah quietly prays to God and says, God, show your people that you're real. And the fire flashes down from heaven and consumes everything on the altar. And in that moment, the people knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is the one true God. And they take the prophets of Baal and they put them to death. Seems like a moment of victory, a new beginning, an opportunity for God's people to finally be faithful to the covenant that God has made with them. But instead, the opposite happens. You see, word gets to the queen that all these prophets are dead, the prophets that she had loved and supported. And so she sends out word that Elijah's as good as dead and she's hunting him down. And Elijah in his fear and probably just in his sheer exhaustion is just ready to be done with the whole thing. And so he finds himself in the desert ready to give up. And you know, at that absolute rock bottom, that's where Elijah's close encounter with God begins. An angel of the Lord comes and, and taps Elijah on the shoulder and says, get up and eat. And Elijah looks and he sees there and there's a, there's a loaf of freshly baked bread and a jug of water. And Elijah eats and drinks and then lays down to sleep again. And then again, an angel of the Lord comes and, and, and wakes him up and says, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. You know, Pastor Laura uh, quipped the other day, God's uh, strategy for taking care of Elijah here is really to give him a snack and then a nap and then repeat. God knows that Elijah needs and he gives it to him. And on the strength of that food that God has given him and the rest as well, Elijah travels for 40 days and 40 nights, seemingly without stopping, until he reaches Horeb, the mountain of God in the wilderness of Sinai. He goes to the place where it all began, the nation of Israel, where, where God gave uh, Moses the, the commandments, where God established this covenant with his people. He made himself his people. This is where Elijah goes. Back to the beginning, back to the commandments that God's people had laid aside and abandoned. And there in the mountain of God, he crawls into a cave and he spends the night there. And the word of the Lord came to him. Verse nine, what are you doing here, Elijah? The Lord says, you see, even though Elijah had traveled there on the strength that the Lord had given him, he was still in a place where God had not called him to be. God had called him to be a prophet to the nation 
And here he is in the wilderness. Elijah, what are you doing here? And it all just kind of comes tumbling out of Elijah in this moment. God, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites, they've rejected your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've put your prophets to death with a sword. And, and I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Now, Elijah isn't very fair to God here in this moment. Because God has just shown up big time in the very previous chapter. And not only that, Elijah's also found out that Obadiah has preserved at least a hundred of the prophets of the Lord and kept them alive in, in the caves. Uh, and, and, and he's taking care of them. And, and, but, but yet we get this window into Elijah's soul, his very spirit, where he feels like there's nobody else. He's the only one left. And the Lord says this, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. God invites him into his presence in response to his, his, his desperation, his isolation, his loneliness, his depletion. The Lord says, come into my presence. And then the show begins. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. That's what the NIV says. The original words here are very hard to translate. It's probably something similar to a brief sound of silence. A brief sound of silence. And when Elijah hears this sound of silence, he pulls his cloak over his face and he goes out and he stands at the mouth of the cave. And God asks him again, what are you doing here, Elijah? It's easy to recognize God in the big things, isn't it? In the awe-inspiring in, in, in the powerful and the moving and the shaking and the awe and the majesty and the fire flashing down and the thunder and the lightning and the 40 days spent on the mountain of God and the radiance of God's glory from Moses' face and the parting of the Red Sea and, and, and even the messengers of God coming and bringing hope and, and, and new life to a couple like Manoah and his wife. But do we recognize God in the small and the quiet in the brief, God is there as well. You see, in the, sh in the cave of our shame, in the cave of our disappointment, in that place where we, like Elijah, say, oh, woe is me. I'm the only one left. That's where God comes and meets us. In this series called Close Encounters, we have said that God wants us to experience him he wants to reveal himself to us as he really is. He wants us to know him. And God uses all sorts of different signs and wonders and, and people and messengers and so on and so forth to make his word and himself known to his people in scripture. But what's behind all of the signs? What's behind the flashing and, and, and the lightning and the, and the big and the, and, and, and the glory and, and, and the small and the intimate Behind all of these signs stands one God, creator of all that is, all powerful, almighty, and, and yet so personally present. And he meets us right where we are, in the depths of our despair. The heart of who he is, scripture says, is love, Unrelenting love, love that pursues us, love that endures to the thousandth generation, as we heard a couple weeks ago. And, and right there, God cares for us, right where we are. Even if he finds us in a place where, where he didn't call us, where he didn't mean us to be, even if we've gone 40 days out of the way, God meets us there. He speaks to us. He nourishes us. And he reminds us of what he's called us to. This is who our God is. He wants us to know him. Will we recognize him? Will we watch for him? 
Well, we stand in the presence of the Lord together. Let's pray. God, you are a good and gracious God. And for the many ways that you make yourself known, even in our day, we recognize behind it all your love, which sees each of us for who we are, which meets each of us right where we are, and maybe especially in our deepest moments of despair. God, make yourself known in our day, in our time. Call us back to you. Sharpen our focus on what you've called us to and rejuvenate us, redeem us, deliver us by the glory of your presence. We pray all this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am not 
am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. We're so glad that you joined us for worship today. A couple of things we want you to know before you go. Next Sunday is November 1st, which is All Saints Day, on the day this year. And we will be remembering all those who have passed, uh, especially those who have passed in the last year from Batavia Covenant Church. Their names will be shared as part of the service, and uh, we'll be remembering them in that way. We're also inviting all of you to send us pictures of your loved ones who you're remembering, whether they've passed away in the last year or perhaps even before that. We would love to include that in part of our remembrance for November 1st. So please send those to us uh, no later than Wednesday so we can include those in the service for November 1st. Secondly, on November 8th, we're excited to share that we're going to be worshiping once again with Logan Street Missionary Baptist Church here in Batavia. We're excited for our churches to stand together in solidarity, uh, particularly in this time uh, in our country when there is so much division. Uh, We want to gather together as the body of Christ uh, and seek God's best for us and for our community as well. So uh, be sure you join us on November 9th, that Sunday morning, our usual time. The service This will be live streamed here from the sanctuary, uh, and we invite you to join us on that day. Register ahead of time to come if you'd like to join us. So whether you're heading into your community groups now, or perhaps you're headed on your way for today, receive this blessing, this benediction as you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace both today and forever. Amen. Go in peace.